Hey there and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com teaching you the tech tools and tactics of today's digital marketing world. My name is Julian and today we want to take a look at the new features within Google Tag Manager. They have just released a few new triggers for us to try out. And today we want to talk about the scroll trigger that has just been released. Now Google has been working hard on Google Tag Manager over the past few weeks because we had just an update on the YouTube uh, trigger that um, was is now able to track YouTube interactions on our pages and they just released a visibility and scroll tracking feature. So um, we are take a look at these new features today, specifically the scroll tracking right now. So let's jump into our demonstration here. So uh, we had some scroll tracking already um, through uh, various listeners that we could install th from Luna Metrics, for example, or from parsnip.io that actually gave us the capability of um, deploying a custom listener. But now we have this built in to um, Google Tag Manager. So when we go over here to the actual trigger menu and we click here on the trigger type, we see that we have two new triggers here that is the scroll depth and the um, forms, no, uh, scroll depth and the element visibility. We will take a look at the element visibility in another video, but in this video, we're going to take specifically a look at scroll depth. So, what does it do? Let's just try it out. We click on here and we see that we have some new um, configurations. We can track vertical scroll depth and horizontal scroll depth. Now, I have mostly on the web. Um, um, vertical scroll depth, so you go down the page, but you could also go left and right, so that would be the horizontal depth that you can um, track. We'll go with the vertical here, and then we have two options. We can basically go and um, trigger our um, event on the percentages or on the pixels. So if you have a page that you already defined as um, this will always be the same length, and you don't want to deploy it on multiple pages. So a very specific cases, I would go with the pixel option. So you can just put in whatever pixel you might want to put in in order to track the element. So if you know exactly when something is happening on the page, when somebody scrolls down, you'll be able to put in the pixel. But for um, keeping this very uh, dynamic, we'll go with the percentages here and just put in 100. So the um, Trigger would only fire an event into the data layer when it hits 100, when we went through the page completely. So let's uh, try this out, give this all a name. Let's call this scroll and 100. Unfortunately, we can't use um, the percent sign. Well, percent. And save this. And now we should have this available. So I'm going to just go into the preview and debug mode. This will just bring out the listener functionality of this trigger. So once we go to our page and here I have a landing page with a lot of text on it, we don't see anything right here. But when we scroll down and hit 100%, we get our new um, event into the data layer, the gtm.scroll depth. What does that mean? Let's look into the data layer. What does it push actually? Here's the event. We get gtm scroll threshold, the scroll units, the scroll direction, um, and the trigger ID, unique event ID. This is something that we don't really need, but we now have that information available in the data layer. So how can we get it out? Uh, you could use a data layer variable, but they are actually new built-in variables. We just need to go to variables here and activate them under the built-in variables configure tab. Scroll down and you see here our new scroll threshold. So we're going to um, activate them here. Go again to preview and debug mode and reload the page. Now here you already see a bit of downside because when we reload a page in modern browsers like Chrome, then the scroll actually um, rem is remembered and you jump back to the last point where you actually reloaded the page. So we are already by 100%. So right away, our scroll dev actually fires. And if we would have 75%, uh, 50%, 25% um, in there, then that would fire automatically as well. We can try this out um, in a later time. But now we have again our scroll dev in here and our variables. And um, when we go to the variables, we have our new variables right here scroll dev units, direction, and 
distance and label. So unfortunately the distance, so the actual pixel um, are not counted if you don't use the scroll uh, distance or the, the um, configurations of the, of the actual pixel um, in your trigger. So that is unfortunate, but uh, we can still work with this and now connect this all to a trigger. So uh, all, all to a tag. So we can go over to our tags and for example, and this is only an example, you don't have to fire this to Google Analytics. We can fire an event tag that um, shows us if people have um, scrolled 100%. So we'll go with our universal analytics choose our event here as a track type and then we can put in a category and an action and there we can obviously use our variables. So for us, we will just go with the, um, let me just see what that all means. Let's go with the threshold and as a label, what else do we have here? Percent, uh, I, would, I would actually, I don't know. Um, it's not very useful information in terms of like when you imagine looking at that in Google Analytics, would it actually make sense to, um, to track this, right? So um, it would be nice to have the scroll distance, but uh, that's not filled. So let's just go with the um, direction, I guess. I mean, it will always be the same. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to fill label actually. Um, now, one thing that uh, I would suggest to turn on is the non-interaction hit true because um, scrolls are mostly happening and if you don't want this to affect your bounce rate, so if the user lands on the page and then scrolls down and leaves the page, do you want to count this as a bounce or not? And I don't want to count this as a bounce, so I will uh, set this to true. And then we need to connect this to our um, Google Analytics account. Now I have already a settings variable where I have my ID um, saved in there and we are all ready to go. All we need to do is uh, put our trigger on, obviously. Let's save this, refresh. And I'm gonna scroll back to the page, reload here so we don't jump to the point automatically. And we don't have any tags firing. Scroll down and now we have our event scroll tag firing, we should also be able to see this in our real-time reporting. So let's go under events. Now, since this is a last um, non-interaction hit true, you will not see this right here, but you need to go to the event last minute and here we see our scroll tracking. Now, you can make this obviously a bit um, more useful in um, terms of what you are tracking. So we could also say you want to track the points 50% and uh, yeah, let's say 50%. So I'm um, just gonna rename that so we know what this is actually doing. Okay, let's preview this again. Oh. Okay, now you just saw uh, one of the problems. So um, when I reload this page and I'm already scrolled down, then it jumps to the space um, automatically. So these two triggers already get fired because we actually um, already scrolled down the page and we have 50 and 100 now in here. So that's unfortunate. Um, so you need to take that in account when you analyze your data. So how many people could have been um, actually reloading the page? Maybe that's the case in on your website that you need to take into account. And this is uh, kind of a downside of this trigger, but it's not really avoidable because uh, that's how browsers actually work. So let's try to scroll up again, reload the page. Now nothing is firing and we scroll down and we see our first event. Now this is our 50% and then we scroll down further and this is our 100%. Now this is a trigger that actually gets deployed on all pages for now. You can always um, configure a um, filter on this trigger. So you can say, okay, only on the page path um, here in our case landing page where you actually want to um, track this. I would actually recommend to put in a filter because that way you are not tracking on all the pages on your website. This could result in many different events and 
um, that way you also do it consciously, right? So you go in and you actually look at this data uh, and say, okay, I want to track this on this page because I'm interested in how far are people scrolling down rather than saying, oh, I'm just gonna deploy this because this is a great trigger. And later on you look into your event reports and you have uh, a lot of data there and it, it just spews up your account and you don't really know what it means and uh, rather not touch it. So be very intentional when you um, deploy this, I would say. And then you have this in your account. You can also build a goal of that. You will obviously will be able to see this in your event reports later on and um, see this yeah, here as well. But uh, this will take a while to actually populate. And then once you have tested everything and are ready to um, deploy this to all your users, you obviously need to click on the submit button and then um, can give this a name and publish this to all your users so it will be live on your website. So this is how you can track with this new scroll dev track uh, trigger from Google Tag Manager. This is built in so it's a bit I would say a bit more reliable than all the other triggers out there that we have already been using. Now, if you have scroll depth tracking installed already through one of these custom listeners, then you don't have to change anything um, and you don't necessarily need to use whatever you have uh, in Google Tag Manager. Obviously, it's a bit, um, it's a bit built in, more built in into the system. So you don't have to deploy a extra um, extra tag to deploy the custom listener. You don't have to build data layer variables to pull that out of the data layer. That's already built in. So if you are new to scroll tracking, why not use the um, built in methods here? And if they don't work for your website, maybe there is, because these triggers are always built for a very standard case. So if it don't work, then you can use still the scroll depth tracking from Lunar Metrics or a Parsnip.io, both very good tracking scripts that will also give you that data. And maybe they work differently or they're built for different cases and suddenly your scroll depth tracking works again. So that is it with this little video. Now, if you liked this video, why not give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel right over there because we're bringing you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.